undying admiration for Nicole S. Young. She's like this photographic entrepreneurial force of nature. Nicole is a professional photographer, probably best known for her outstanding food and landscape photography. And she's also an author with several print and ebooks under her belt. But wait, there's more. Nicole also has a huge portfolio of top selling stock images, a rapidly growing online store where she sells her books, post processing presets, actions, and textures, a heavily attended blog where she shares her many podcasts, interviews, free trainings, and articles, and is in demand as a presenter, teacher, and author through various prestigious photography associations and magazines. She's one of these people that makes me want to up my game. <laughs> and I love watching her build her incredible empire with the energized focus of a Jedi Knight. Nicole is also a wife, dog mom, and I'm proud to call her my friend. And I welcome her today on The Chat. Howdy, howdy, everybody. It's Karen Hutton and The Chat with Karen Hutton. Sound bite-sized insights from some of the coolest people on the planet, like Nicole Young. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Karen. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Cool. I'm doing really good. And now I'm going to talk about you in front of your face. <laughs> Nicole Young is a photographer. She's an entrepreneur. She is an author. She is a wife. She's a dog mom. She She's like superwoman, I swear to God. And I'm so excited she's here today because we're going to talk about those things and what it means to be superwoman, which clearly she is. So, Nicole, I, I want to start, well, first of all, give us like, you know, the quick thumbnail on, you know, your background, kind of where, where you came from, how you kind of got into this whole thing, mm -hmm. and how this all happened, roughly. Well, it started back, well, you know, I, I, if I go really far back, not, not too far, but I started getting into photography in high school, and that's where I developed my passion for photography. Uh, in a nutshell, I didn't think that I would be able to make it a career, so I, I joined the military, joined the Navy instead, and became a linguist. Uh, so I was in the Navy for a total of eight and a half years. During that time, I actually discovered micro-stock photography, and I started doing that, and without even intending to, I realized, hey, I'm making money from this. So it went from, you know, from the Navy, I found out about making money with photography. I, I separated from the military about a year and a half after that. And I, it really just has kind of just blown up since then. I, I've been involved yeah. a lot with social media, uh, just finding the right people, the mentors that helped me kind of get, uh, you know, opportunities and, started writing books, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just kind of grown into uh, now I do a lot of my own self-published ebooks, or I'm starting, I should say, to do my own self-published ebooks. I have an online store. I'm still doing photography, and uh, I, I just keep putting more stuff on my plate in a good way, and, uh -huh. you know, just... And it keeps, really you fun. just keep knocking it out of the park. Yeah. Going, Bam! There yeah. she goes again. Bam! <laughs> um, you were a linguist. What did you do as a linguist in the Navy? Well, I was a, uh, I was a Korean linguist. And I honestly, I can't really talk about a lot of it. Um, huh. Just yeah, it was very super secret stuff. Oh so, my god! Yeah, it was. Um, it was a really fun experience. I did. I I, I flew on airplanes on the EP3, and that was actually a really cool experience. Getting to go up and you know, and, and sit on a plane, and um, I can remember just sitting there looking around, going, "Wow, this is like Top Gun stuff." You know, it's what it felt like. Uh, but I got to go have some really crazy training. I did aircrew training before all of that, which is uh, there's a lot of swimming involved. And if anyone has ever seen Officer and Gentleman, it's it's there's a, a part where they're doing some water training stuff, and it's it's kind of similar to some of that stuff. So that, oh my god, yeah, I've done a lot of really fun seer school, you know, survival school. Uh, so it, it was a really really fun and unique part of my life, and I don't regret it at all. I think it was a great wow. experience. And, the it hidden past of you know, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I love it. In fact, if we ever end up in a foxhole together, you'll be the person I want in that <laughs> foxhole with me, so to speak. Um, so, okay, but cutting to now, I I have long admired the way. In fact, it's funny that you were with the Navy because in my mind, I, I look at how you do your business, I look at how you live your life, and I always think you approach it with surgical precision, like a Navy SEAL. Like you, you just like you got your goggles on and you got your sights and you're like, bam! And I mean, whatever you have in your, you know, in your crosshairs doesn't stand a chance. So, um, I just really admire the way you have created this business. So, tell us a little bit about what all it includes because you're not you're a photographer, but you've got many, just many arms, and they all work. Sure. And, 
Well, photography obviously is is kind of the um, the basis of, of course, everything that I do. I, I write books about photography, and so being an, a, a very good and proficient photogra photographer is very important, you know, to having that as a background. Um, I also like to uh, I, I create a lot of presets uh, for my website, my my Nicolzi store, and I have like Lightroom presets and Photoshop presets. Um, I have a very good understanding of Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm actually Adobe certified in Photoshop. So you know that helps with things like that. I um, I'm a very right and left brain person. Yeah. You know, like there's some people really identify with one side or the other. And I've always, you know, when I was a kid, I can remember taking those tests to find out which brain you were. And I always felt right in the middle. Every time I did it, it was like right in the middle. And now that I'm doing things that really require a lot of both sides, you know, the artistic uh, and the technical side of things, I can really see that kind of coming to fruition. That's actually true. You know that I. I'm very organized, but I also like to think that I'm, I have a very good eye and artistic abilities. So, uh, in with writing and you know, doing any kind of business, is it? It's almost it's almost impossible to do it without having a little bit of both on either side, especially with photography. You, know, you have to be able to balance that technical and artistic if you really want to make it work, and, you know, and be successful. Yeah, and how so? I want you to show some of your photos because it, it cover your work really covers a gamut. Sure. Um, so while you're pulling those photos up, um, can you talk and do that at the same time? Yeah. I can barely do that, so I just thought, well. oh, nice. Now I'm hungry. Okay, I didn't have <laughs> lunch. That's not fair. So your food photography is second to none. Do you cook? Do you like? How did that happen? How did you discover food photography? Well, the reason that I started doing food photography was because I, I love cooking and I love photography. This photo right here, what you're seeing, is very, um, very much a, a good example of my style in food photography. It's very bright and colorful and uh, very clean edits. I, I like to keep things nice and clean. I don't do a ton of stylization with my food photography, uh, but I, I really like the colors, you know, the balancing colors and and uh, for this image, there's a lot of blues that contrast with the reds, and then there's a little sprig of mint. I think with any kind of dessert photo, you can throw a little bit of mint in there to make it bright. Yeah, beautiful. mint makes everything so, better, I swear to God. Yeah. I licensed all of my images through iStock Photo. Okay. And, of course, I have prints available and things like that. But um, for the most part, I do make my money through my actual photography uh, on iStock Photo. Mm -hmm. I sell prints through oh. SmugMug. Oh, yeah, I have a, a, a Smog Mug site over my on my blog. It's linked right on my on my website. Okay. Oh, actually, that was a meal you made for your husband. Yes, I did. I, I, I remember that. A lot of the a lot of the photos that I like this photo right here of this as a, a chilled asparagus soup. Okay, so let me kind of back up. Most of my images, like this one, the peaches and this uh, berry bruschetta, were both photographed with my 5D Mark III and my one, Canon 100 macro, which uh -huh. if you add all of that up, that's probably like a three to four thousand dollar setup, right? Right. So a pretty, a pretty pricey setup. It's you know, it's it's professional gear. It's good gear. But with this image, I wanted to show you don't have to use this crazy expensive stuff. So I used a Canon 60D, which is a um, crop frame, and I used a just a 50 millimeter standard, you know, nifty 50 kind of a 51.4, I believe, is the one I used for this. So just uh -huh. kind of show that you don't have to use crazy expensive equipment to get good results. So I love that. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Let's get onto the landscape because I don't know if I can talk through all this. Oh, look. This is from your trip to Cam Cambodia. Cambodia. Yeah. yeah. This was one of the, I think they call them the jungle temples in Cambodia where the trees are, oh. you know, basically growing into the, the walls and the it's, it's really unique and very beautiful. Uh, so I, I did some landscape there. What else do I have to show? Oh, there's another one that was in the Oregon. Ooh. This is one of my recent favorites, actually. I was with my friend Dave, and we were driving back from Silver Falls State Park, and we didn't, you know, we weren't, in, there wasn't anywhere to photograph the sunset out there, so we happened to just see a few spots on the way back and made sure that we stopped, you know, to actually yeah. photograph them. So this is one of those. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome. There we go. There's, there's Kodak. I love that dog. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. Yeah, so she oh, and professional like dog trainer, an educator apparently. <laughs> oh, I'm not a professional dog trainer. I actually hired a professional, and she did a wonder. I mean, I did all the work. She taught yeah. me how to teach train my dog basically. Yeah. So 
So yeah. that was him gradu- at his graduation. Which oh, is my God, that is so cool. <laughs> but, oh, my God. That is Oh, my God. I love it. And then you have the cover of your book. Yeah. That's, oh, look at how little it looks. <laughs> oh, my God. This is, she, wrote a, she wrote a miniature book. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it any bigger. It must be a that's small so version funny. of it. So. <laughs> but it's called, it's called The Inspired Photographer, right? Yes, Inspired Photographer. And people can find that at, tell, give us the... Uh, at uh, store.nicolzy.com. Oh, perfect. There it is. It's an ebook, The Inspired mm-hmm. Photographer. Get that thing, because that thing is going to edimicate you. <laughs> Guarantee you of that. So tell us what your what is your process for writing a book. Everybody's always like, everybody has a different approach. Some people start with the words. Some people start with the design. Some people like, well, how do you do it? What is your process? Well, it, always, it always has to start with the idea. That's the number one thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I use a lot of lists, like uh, Wonderlist is a, an app that I use and it syncs through all of my devices so I can keep it on me at all times. But You're the one that told me about that and I use that now and it has saved my life. Such a, it's such a great, it's W-U-N-D-E-R, Wonderless, such a great app. I think yeah. it's free, I think they have a pro version but I don't, I don't, I don't, even, I don't need the pro version. It's, it's no. uh, you can yeah. like collaborate with lists and things with other people but exactly. I just use it for myself. Um, and I, I have all sorts of ideas for ebooks and, and of course a bunch of other things too. But for my ebooks, you know, that's where I really get my initial idea. And w- it really kind of just takes me some time to kind of let something soak in and really, you know, kind of chew on the idea and figure out what I'm going to, uh, h- how I'm going to actually lay it all out. So once I, once I come up with the idea, then I start outlining it, and I, I create an outline, and that actually. Uh, this 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 part of this goes with writing my own self publish and then some of it is you know like with Peach Bit, same thing. I always come up with an outline first, and then I have I have that outline. I will kind of organize the chapters and and just kind of briefly say what I want to you know say in each of these chapters, and then uh, when it comes to self, and that's pretty much the the only initial part that I would do. Let's say with the book with uh, Peach Bit because that's what my publisher is. After that, it's just a matter of writing it, and then they do all of the design and marketing for my own stuff for my self published stuff. I actually. I do all my own design work through InDesign, so I and you know cover design and all of these things. So when I get really excited about an ebook, I will actually do the entire design template before I've even written the thing. You're so just I have, visual. That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the whole thing is not just words; it's the whole book. Like even the one that I just wrote, uh, the inspired photographer. It's it's a piece of art to me. It's not just. Here's a book, you know. It, it's more than that to me. So it, it has to be very visually appealing for me to really want to be excited about it and create it. So like right now, I'm going to be writing a book on uh, a self-published book on landscape photography, and it's a, a first of a series of books that I'm going to be writing on kind of the the. It's called Light and Process Landscape Photography, and it's going to be about the beginnings of you know what I was thinking when I was actually creating the photograph, the gear I used, and then actually the post-processing behind you know from start to finish on how I actually oh. created it. That's so, going to be a hit. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I have the entire thing laid out. I have all the photographs I'm going to be using. And, and so now I just have to sit down and write it, you know, and, and, and create the, I'm going to have some video tutorials to go along with it as well. So that's, you know, that's kind of how I start. I kind of start it somewhere um, towards the end and then I work my way into it and build it. Because like, when I have a, vi- a visual idea of what it's going to look like, then it's easier for me to kind of put everything else down on, on paper. Interesting. I know a lot of people get stuck on, oh, they got the blank paper in front of their, you know, in front of them and they can't figure out what to put on it. But sometimes if you just go design it or, you know, uh, create, start creating it in a different medium, you mm-hmm. work your way back into the words. So yeah. I think that's really interesting. So I have some, um, I have some random questions for you. Sure. Random is fun. I know. I love random. Okay. One of them is, how will you know when you have arrived in your chosen profession here? I don't know. That's a tough one because it's going to be different for everyone. Um, what is it for you? For me, I think yeah. it's going to be when I'm really teaching on stage in front of a lot of people. I'm curious, <laughs> how big of a stage? Is it like three, 4,000 people? Is it 4,000 oh, oh, not that many people. Not that many people. Um, four, 500 know. maybe. Oh, 100 people. Yeah. So Nice. And then, and then you know, from there, it's, it, that's kind of just what I see my next really big step. Because uh-huh. I feel like I've done a lot of things. I've published books. I'm self-publishing books. I'm I have my own website. I'm sorry, I'm selling things, and it's like, what's the next step? You know, so right, love it. Yeah. What's your pet peeve? I have a couple. Um, I'll tell them real quickly. When when I'm driving, I cannot stand it when people don't use their blinkers. That drives me crazy. <laughs> 
uh, or when they put their blinker on and they forget it's on, you know. So blinkers, it's, use blinkers properly. <laughs> <laughs> That'll uh, be one of your big yeah. four or five hundred people audience presentations. <laughs> okay, idea of a perfect day. Perfect day is. So waking up, just let, letting the sun wake me up, have, making coffee and breakfast and having a nice breakfast with my husband, and then taking our dog Kodak out. Uh, now it's to the beach in Santa Cruz is kind of our place to go because we moved out here and um, it's a little ways from where we are now, but there's a beautiful beach where we can just go on a long walk with him. And, and then after that, uh, finding a nice place to sit down and have a beer and um, tasty meal and... Can I come with you on your perfect day? <laughs> <That's my laughs> I kind of like that. That's kind of a, and, and I didn't mention, which we probably should mention, your husband is Brian Matias. He's mm -hmm. the community manager for Google Plus Photos. And so you both have this focus in photography and support mm -hmm. each other, and it's kind of perfect in that way. So yeah. it's kind of like a perfect, perfect day. Final question. Mm -hmm. What makes you laugh? Stupid humor. <laughs> You know, like like the movie. If ever anyone's familiar with the movie Airplane, yeah, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I. Think. So. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I'm a very like happy person in general, so I laugh frequently. You know, because I just I enjoy, I like to enjoy life. So, but when it comes down to actual humor, that's the kind of stuff that makes me laugh. That's awesome. That's yeah. fantastic, Nicole Young. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing a piece of your world and a piece of your heart with us today. And uh, remember, you can find her at. NicoleZ.com, N-I-C-O-L-E-S-Y. So if people want to follow her, you can find her on Google Plus and Facebook and all over the place, and, of course, uh, follow her on her blog as well. It has been a pleasure and a delight being with you all today, and we'll be back next time with somebody who is also fantastically inspiring and insightful. So thanks for joining us today. See you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs>